Hey, what up guys, welcome to another one. So today we're gonna talk about leather and perfumery. And this is a topic that is really interesting, but can get confusing, simply because many people, I believe, are not really able to visualize what a leather fragrance should smell like. And that is because leather is not an actual note that you pour in a formula and all of a sudden you have a perfume that smells like a leather bag. It is an accord created by the perfumer who will use different materials such as quinoline, saffroline, uh, cade oil, birch tar, castorium, labdanum, and so on, in order to mimic, to replicate the smell of the tanning materials used in the creation of leather goods. So historically, guys, this is something that has been done for a long time. For example, the Romans and the Greeks used a combination of alum and salt to tan their hides and make them more resistant. Whereas the North Africans and the Arabs have been using a combination of cow dung and urine in order to make their sandals more supple and more resistant. This is the reason, the reason and this is just a fun fact, why if you go to Morocco and you buy a pair of babouche, they will literally smell like a goat. They smell really strong and really bad and the reason is simply because they have been tanned. This is a method that is still traditionally used in either goat or cow dung. So believe me when I tell you that these will last you a lifetime. These are really resistant but that was just a parenthesis guys. So when we talk about leather perfumes we should be able to separate them in three different categories. So you have the Spanish leather, which is known as Peau d'Espagne. You have the Russian leather, which is known as Cuir de Russie, traditionally. And then you have the modern Suede leather, just like a perfume such as Tuscan leather by Tom Ford would be. So the Peau d'Espagne is musky and animalic, whereas the Russian leather is more like it's pungent and last but not least the suede leather will be ambery vanillic and fruity so the first one that was actually created is of course the Peau d'Espagne the Spanish leather and we need to go back to the 16th century where the Spanish tanners used to sprinkle their leather gloves with essences of jasmine, civet and musk in order to cover the stinky smell of those uh, leather gloves. And this basically inspired many fragrances to be. So when we talk about Spanish leather, well, what it is is basically a representation of the smell of a woman's skin. Peau d'Espagne means skin of Spain and I believe the reason that many perfumes that feature notes typically uh, associated to this accord do not really smell like leather is simply because the Peau d'Espagne is basically an evocative feeling. It's not an actual leather scent. It is a scent that uses ingredients that have been traditionally used for a long time, such as Styrax, Cedar, Tonka Bean, and Vanilla, in order to create this aura of a second skin, of a woman's beautiful skin. A good example for you to understand would be Knizeten. When you smell Knizeten, you will not go like, oh my God, this is a leather scent. Not at all. This is a beautiful, uh, ambery, uh, soft, uh, greenish scent that is very unique. And even though it is marketed for men, I believe it could work really well on a fancy lady. So, Knizeten, Spanish leather. It is basically an accord. So if we travel forward in time and we go to the year 1880, there is a synthetic note that was created in that year, which is known as quinoline. Now quinoline is a very sharp substance that reminds you of tar. It is just like birch tar. It is the synthetic version of birch tar, you could say. And this material spawned the creation of dozens and dozens of perfumes that you might know it, uh, Cuir de Russie by Chanel, that is known, of course, as a Russian leather. 
Now, the first actual Russian leather scent was Caron Tabac Blanc. And it would be a revolutionary perfume that unfortunately doesn't really exist anymore, which was uh, and basically a representation of the emancipation of the woman, simply because at that time, women were, were, were starting to be a bit more rebellious. They were starting to do what they wanted. They started smoking. So Caron created a perfume that was able to cover up the sins of the women, which is something really beautiful. Then, of course, you have Cuir de Russie by Chanel, created in 1924 followed by a perfume called Revolte by Lancôme in 1936, which still exists today under a different name. And I'm talking about Cuir, unfortunately discontinued, but this, you can still find it on eBay. And this is a jewel that any person that has a respectable collection should own. And this is a good representation of a Russian leather. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Then of course, uh, the suede leather, which is more ambery, more vanillic, and I couldn't name this typology of leathers without showing you Tuscan leather. Now guys, let's get down to business. I'm gonna show you a few leather scents that I think you should actually try, which are amazing. Now, aside from the one I showed you, I have a perfume called Cuir Garamante. This is a perfume from the house of MDCI. It is so unique, so good, so particular, guys. This is not straight up the typical leathery scent. This is a combination of rose, leather, oud, spices. Uh, it, it is a grandiose perfume that only a brand like MDCI could actually create. These guys use the top materials in perfumery. Uh, they use the best noses and honestly, you need to give this one a try. I could even feature this one in the best rose and oud uh, list, but honestly, to me, this is more of a suede accord. It is fantastic. It could work on a woman and on a man, but it's slightly more manly uh, according to my personal taste. Now, another grandiose perfume, something that should actually uh, be put under a glass jar, a, a bell jar, is a perfume called Anubis by the house of Papillon. This is such an evocative fragrance, guys. Give it a try because this one will transport you directly in a time where the pharaohs used to rule the northern continent of Africa. It is insanely good. This is uh, the same genre as Tuscan leather. So suede, ambery, vanillic accord. A beautiful, beautifully constructed perfume, guys. Now, this one is a bit more futuristic. This is something that I would picture a man like Ryan Gosling while filming uh, Blade Runner wearing. Ganymede. This one uses a base of saffroline, which is a, a saffronic leathery base mixed with beautiful, beautifully uh, constructed natural aromas. It has some mandarin. It has some immortel. It, it is very particular. This is one of the few summery leather scents out there. Not too complicated, but very futuristic, guys. I will probably do a full review of this one soon, guys. Ganymede by the house of Marc-Antoine Barrois. Now, the last one I wanna talk about, uh, this, guys, is probably one of my top leather scents of all time. Incense Sweat by the house of Salvatore Ferragamo. This is discontinued, but it has been recreated and is now called Testa di Moro. It is the exact same perfume. So if you wanna know what the most perfect incense suede accord in existence is nowadays, buy this thing, buy Testa di Moro, and you will thank me for the rest of your life because this is one of the ultimate sweat perfumes in existence, guys. So 
I hope you enjoyed. I will see you again in the next one. So if you have any leather scents that you want me to talk about, feel free to ask. If you have any recommendations uh, and you think I should try, go ahead and comment. I would be really delighted to hear something from you guys. So I will see you in the next one and take it easy. Ciao.